It says evaluate the definite integral. This one I will tell you is a u substitution. Secondly, it requires a little bit more cleverness because you really have to understand your derivatives. And then third, it's also a definite integral. So with the definite integral, we're not going to end up with a function where actually our final answer is going to be a what? A number, right? Because it's like an area between two points, right? So x1 is basically e to the 64th power, and then x2 is e to the 81st power. Thoughts about our good friend you? <laughs> You're definitely right. Because another here's another little insight I haven't mentioned to you about you. The, the function that's sort of innermost to grab is usually a good idea for you. Do you see that ln x is not only in a denominator, but it's under a square root? It's like, oh, like, I don't want to try to think about taking an antiderivative of that. But if I let it be u, then maybe things work out more nicely. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, so let's try that. So let's do u equals natural log of x, okay? So let's talk about du. What should we get? So uh, I'll do the writing, but um, you kind of dictate to me. What should um, what should du equal to? Beautiful. 1 over x dx. Now remember, if it helps you, do the thing that my high school algebra teacher, she always did. She loved underlining things. 1 over x is this guy, because there's an imaginary 1 up there, right? Yeah. Dx is this guy, right? So du is going to take care of both of those. And then u is exactly ln x, and that goes in here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, one more thing you and I have not discussed. And this is actually worth sort of an aside discussion because I've seen and heard calculus teachers do it both ways. Now listen to me for a second. What you can do is you can take these bounds and just sort of leave them off, get everything in terms of u's. So let me sort of do a sketch here. Get everything in terms of u's, get to x's, and then put on the original bounds, and then get your area. Now I will tell you that works just fine. You can do u's, you can take, and by the way, this is the integration step, right? We can change, so I forgot the word change in there, change to x's, change back to x's, and then use your original bounds, then get your area. That works just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If that makes the most sense to you, go for it. However, the more sort of mathematically sophisticated way, and actually I will say, if, as long as you know what you're doing, the faster way, is to change your bounds now. You can actually change your bounds now. And let's talk about what that means. e raised to the 64th power and e raised to the 81st power are x values. They're like x1 and x2. Does it make sense to you that there's a corresponding u1 and u2 that correspond to x1 and x2. Basic, by the way, when you actually do a u substitution without getting too technical, that's actually called a transformation. It's like we're transforming from the x space to the u space. Now that sounds really technical. The point I'm trying to make is the, the width of those rectangles is, is different for you than they are for x. That's all we're really saying. But suffice it to say, if x1 is e to the 64th and x2 is e to the 81st, what equation could we use to find, you know, what u1 and u2 are correspondingly? I guess it's u equals natural log of yes, x. Yes, right? u equals okay. natural log of x. Because remember, this is important. That defines what u is like that's an equation we just made up right it yeah. but it defines what u is so does it make sense to you that u1 is the natural logarithm of e to the 64th okay 
right? And then u2 is just the natural logarithm of e to the 81st. Now what that means is after we take this integral and transform it into u's, we're going to have new bounds. Now, I, by the way, I want you to use your pre-calculus skills. The natural log of e to the 64th is actually a nice number. What number is that going to be? That would be 64, right? Just 64, right? Because aren't they just yeah. inverses? Okay. Yeah. Hopefully you recall that from like your pre-calculus type class, right? Yeah. Okay. And then how about ln of e to the 81st? Should be what? 81. 81. Okay. So look, we've now got new bounds. Now, you know what the great thing about new bounds is? You never need to go back to X. Yeah. <laughs> so it saves you some work. It saves you some effort. It saves you possible mistakes as long as you know what you're doing to change the bounds. So I always recommend to students that they change the bounds. Some people are like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, you can go back to X and then do the original bounds. That'll work. There's nothing wrong with that. You get the same answer, but I will tell you, as long as you know what you're doing, it is faster to change your bounds, okay? We've got 64 to 81 are the new bounds. I'm oh, sorry, 1 over x dx became du, so that's du right here. And then square root of ln x, well, ln x is u, so that's the square root of u. Now, that really doesn't look that bad, especially for a definite integral. Okay, yeah. so... First of all, sorry, u to the square root of u is what power again? One half. And it's also on the bottom. So what do we probably want to do? Negative one half, right. So 64, 81, u to the negative one half du. Now that looks like I can do that. That's not too bad, right? Mm -hmm. Now one more thing. Did you notice, by the way, in this case, we didn't have any stowaways, right? We didn't have any constants that we need to throw out front. So... That's the way it worked out. It was just sort of convenient, but let's move on. What's the next step? We go one power what? So yep. Yep. And then one over. We'll be careful. Remember, du goes away. Oh, yeah. So we get u to the one half. What comes out front, though? Mul right. So always say it to yourself out loud. One power higher on the exponent multiply by the reciprocal of the new power in front. So that's going to be 2 because 2 over 1, right? And then here's our bounds, 81 and 64. So this 2 can just be left out front, and then we can do the calculation. Because, by the way, whenever you have bounds, it's so-called upper minus lower, which was just like that area between two curves. Now, by the way, u to the 1 half is also known as what? Yeah, square root. So can't we just do square root of 81 minus the square root of 64? Close all the parentheses. That's not so bad. I think we can handle that. <laughs> okay. That's really not bad. So 2 times square root of 81 is what? 9. 9 and then square root of 64? 8. 8. 9 minus 8 is 1 times 2. Bah, bah, bah. 2. 2 on the nose. <laughs> it, turned, it makes it so much easier. What doing does? Substitute, like doing the whole use sub thing. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a complicated looking integral a lot easier that's for sure yeah 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 okay i don't even know where to approach this one yeah now, now, now by the way easy. yeah now by the way um because i've done this many times can i show you what it would look like so i'm going to do duplicate so on board number 29 we have the exact same written down but i'm just going to show you quickly what it would look like if you didn't change your bounds so I'll just write this out quickly. So I'll just go very quickly. But you'll see it is more cumbersome. Okay? So you still get the integral of... So 1 over x dx is du. And then we still have square root of um, u. Right? But remember, one of the important things is you can't forget to put the bounds back on. <laughs> so this is still antiderivative u to the minus 1 half du. So we're going to get the same thing we had before. We're going to get u to the 1 half with a 2 out front. But then we're going to say now to x's, right? So then we've got 2 ln of x to the 1 half, which is square root, right? 
and then so let me actually just do that so we've got square root of ln x because one half and then u is ln x and then the bounds are e to the 81st and e to the 64th okay all right so this is two square root of and you gotta be careful here ln of e to the 81st minus square root of ln e to the 64th okay so this is a little bit more cumbersome notice now you have to do two and then that's the square root of 81 minus the square root of 64 and then now we're back to where we were right so this is 9 minus 8 so that's 2 times 9 minus 8 which is 2 okay so first of all it's a little more cumbersome because you leave off the bounds but you got to be remember to put them back on <laughs> yeah. for one thing second thing is the numbers you end up with here can be more difficult to deal with basically a lot of times when you change the bounds it actually makes the numbers you have to plug in easier yeah you'll still end up with the same thing i guarantee but again i just think it's easier to just change the bounds but remember changing the bounds means you use the u equation and you plug each of those x values that was on the integral bounds into the u equation 